Good afternoon, and welcome to Design World's webinar titled Computational Fluid Dynamics, Key Features and Best Practices. Our panel today consists of representatives from Comsol, ANSYS, Autodesk, and Mentor Graphics. But first, a few housekeeping items before we begin. For presenters and all participants in today's live event, please know that this webinar will be posted on the Design World website, which is www.designworldonline.com. It will also be emailed to all participants who are watching the webinar live today. We encourage everyone to tweet about key points for those who weren't able to join us today. Please include the hashtag CFDWeb, short for webinar, in your tweets. And lastly, during the course of the presentation, you can post questions and comments, and we will address them at the end of the four presentations. I'm Laura Carabine, Senior Editor of Design World Magazine. CFD is one of my beats here, but I've also followed and written about the analysis and simulation technology for 20 years. Our panel today is made up of four CFD experts, including Dr. Wim Slaughter, who is Lead Product Manager at ANSYS, Derek Cooper, who is Product Manager at Autodesk, Dr. David Kahn, who is Vice President of Sales at Comsol, and Dr. Eva Weinhold, who is Product Marketing Manager at Mentor Graphics. Welcome, everyone. Our first presenter is Wim, Dr. Wim Slaughter. Wim has started CFD work 17 years ago to work in the business of engineering simulation software. He has had various management positions in software development, consulting and sales, as well as product management. Go ahead, Wim, you have the microphone. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Um, now, first of all, I want to express my, my special thanks to Design World for being invited to this webinar. So I'm, I'm pre pretty much pleased to inform you about some of our key features and solver technologies uh, for, from which our CFD customers uh, clearly benefit from. So, As you may know, ENSYS uh, has been the trusted CFD partner of choice for leading companies for more than 30 years. And without being arrogant, our Fluent and CFX tools are the most widely used and validated CFD products on the market. So, but first, a few words uh, for those who are not familiar with our company. And as though we are founded in 1970 and have over 1,600 employees, we develop and market and support engineering simulation software. This was I meant to show. We develop and market uh, engineering simulation software as shown on this slide. Um, we provide uh, software technologies for fluid dynamics, for structural mechanics, as well as electromagnetics. Um, as mentioned, uh, we are represented in, in, in many countries, 40 countries, I believe. We have many direct offices. We work through a network of channel partners. And, and together with our partners, we foster also partnerships with customers. Uh, and provide also uh, local local support. So open request of uh, design world, I will first share with you a few PowerPoint slides on key features and solver technologies. So first of all, it's important to note that enter CFD can solve many, uh, many uh, different problems. Just a few types of problems are listed on this slide. Uh, of course, problems uh, which are fixed in time and changes with time, or laminar, laminar or turbulent flows, or problems involving heat transfer, uh, not just convection, but also conduction and radiation, like bu buoyant flows, but also fluids with fixed and variable densities, um, but also all kinds of mixtures from fluid-fluid, fluid-vapor, fluid, and vapor, 
solid mixtures, chemical reactions. So F Enzys offers a very comprehensive, if not the most complete suite of advanced CFD modeling capabilities. And we are committed to ensuring your product development success by delivering the right tools, CFD tools, to address not only your current but also your future CFD challenges. By having said that, there is more to that, obviously. Another key uh, aspect is, is, um, is geometry modeling. We provide a CAD neutral offerings with parametric links to almost any CAD system. We can highlight our bidirectional and associative CAD links, uh, which provide persistence throughout the entire simulation workflow, from CAD to MESH, for example, but also to physics, to post-processing, as well as to design exploration and optimization. So we provide also direct and feature-based modeling capabilities. And that's shown more or less on the top, on the bottom of this, um, uh, of this slide, um, that you can notice that the direct modeler is rather suited for conceptual design, allowing fast design changes on so-called dump models, so models without any parameters, for example. So all these extensive geometry modeling capabilities obviously help you to increase your engineering productivity. Engineering productivity is, is important. So apart from direct and feature-based modeling capabilities, we talk about workflow. Workflow needs to be easy to use, of course where you have a consistent look and feel wherever data is being entered into, into the process. Shown on this slide, uh, from geometry to meshing, as well as problem setup and, uh, and post-processing, obviously, all uh, at, at the single plan. But also, you have the possibility to set up, uh, to make use of wizards yourself, for example. Wizards where you set up the fluid flow, uh, where you set the boundary conditions, uh, where, where you simply click on next and, and move on in your uh, entire workflow. So all wizard-driven process. Important to note is also the fact that you can customize your menus, your, your graphical panels, to tailor the setup for your own company, for example. But also that you have the flexibility to extend the solvers uh, to meet your particular requirements regarding physics or environmental factors to be accounted for. So in other words, we deliver flexibility through optimization and also customization uh, in order to meet your specific design or workflow requirement. So on this particular slide, I'm trying to get across that that at ENSYS, our focus is, is also on reducing the overall time to reliable solutions. So in addition to the powerful geometry tools and workflow features, as just mentioned, we also provide field-tested and advanced physical models, uh, but also reliable solvers that will converge the toughest applications very fast. So you can see here advanced models for flow physics from cavitating flow models, which can be models completely in steady state as well as in transient mode, as well as uh, all kinds of advanced physical models. We know from our customers that they want reliable answers fast and that they don't want to ignore and compromise on flow physics. After all, what's the value of limited accuracy uh, by having fast results? So it, is, it may even direct you in the wrong direction. So we believe accuracy, reliability, and robustness build confidence into the CFD solution and overall allow you a shorter overall time to solution. But we talk also about parametric simulation. Parametric simulation is key in our vision of ANSYS. It can probably be best demonstrated by showing you just on this slide a design exploration and optimization example of an intake port um, of a gasoline engine, I believe. But by the way, the objective here of this particular problem is to maximize the effective flow area uh, of this intake port. So by having our integrated solution for design of experiments, that enables people to easily analyze thousands of data points in a single user environment. Also, 
if we talk about our CFD solution, it enables people to optimize uh, the workflows by automatically propagating changes in geometry, physics, without the need for manual rework by having just a single click on update all the design points of relevance to you. Also, we provide integrated tools for not only helping you to understand which parameters your design is most sensitive to, but also determine which design parameters require the tightest control uh, in, in, in quality uh, as well, and in sensitivity for uncertainty analysis. But also, we provide morphing, uh, Six Sigma analysis, integrated tools, but also links to partner solutions as, as required. So our CFD solutions help customers gain deeper product insights and achieve productivity gains by analyzing multiple automated parametric design variations with our complex program. What this slide is, what I'm in particular uh, very uh, excited about, is really big news uh, because it's, it's, it's really revolutionary. It's truly a unique solver. This a joint solver built in, in in ANSYS will provide you guidance on how best to modify the shape of a design so as to achieve a certain improvement. It will provide you a quantitative estimate of the improvement that can be expected if a design change is made prior to making the actual change itself. So without doing a change uh, uh, effect in, in a simulation, you can get the best guidance on your, uh, on your modification regarding drag sensitivity, regarding pressure drops, all relevant parameters. So our built-in a joint solver technique, for example, is, is a very efficient means of exploring a design space. Uh, it will guide you and it will provide you better understanding of the most significant influences on a system in a single computation. When we talk about fluid structure interaction, ENSYS is pushing here really the traditional boundaries of simulation to better understand the interplay between fluids and solids, so to say. We, we provide basically three types of fluid structure interaction methods which are embedded, uh, which are embedded in, in, in the code. To ensure that you can affect, you can take effect of the solid motion on the fluid flow uh, in an accurate and effective way. So with our integrated solution, you don't have to purchase or administer or configure third-party coupling service, uh, software or even pre and post uh, processing software. For example, on the left-hand side, you see rigid body uh, fluid structure uh, capabilities like this root blower or this piston moving, uh, but also a store separation from an aircraft as, as shown here on, on the bottom. Uh, using an integrated six degrees of freedom rigid body motion solver along with remeshing of the mesh itself. Um, also one way fluid structure interaction from fluid flow to thermal stresses and deformations all in a single user environment. Uh, again, also on this slide is shown the one, uh, an example from Embraco which is part of Whirlpool and a world leader in pressure market for refrigerations, they use the two-way fluid structure interaction to analyze read valves of small compressors under high frequency condition. So because we combine CFD with FE, uh, FEA, our finite element technique, um, we uh, in a single pre and post processor, uh, which is rather robust and, and most applicable. So this slide, and this is um, uh, a slide showing from Dyson, uh, is a customer example, obviously. Yeah, I want to mention here that this particular bladeless Dyson air multiplier fan is probably the biggest advancement in household fans since the electric fan was invented. So Dyson engineers faced the difficult challenge of developing and optimizing 
uh, this particular fan. And it took approximately two weeks for design engineers to build and assemble and test physical prototypes using rapid prototype technology. But to complement the experimental testing, but also to reduce development time, Dyson engineers use Enzo CFD to evaluate multiple designs in a single day, significantly cutting down the time to evaluate uh, various design options. So using Enzo CFD, the team improved the performance by uh, twi yeah, 250 percent over the overall uh, overall um, initial concept design. As another custom example, I'm going to address the exhaust manifold as shown here. It's clearly a multi-physics type of problem where the heat transfer, exhaust flow, but also mechanical deformation are all coupled together you know, in a single calculation. So the exhaust flow changes the temperature in the manifold, and the change of temperature causes the mechanical deformation affecting, again, the exhaust flow on return. So the objective of the customer was here to optimize the dual outlet exhaust manifold for robust performance while minimizing the pressure drop. So the customer was looking actually at, at four types of uh, uh, um, design parameters as mentioned on this slide as well. And they had a clear constraint, design constraint, to keep the maximum deformation below 1.5 millimeters. So as you can probably imagine, manual iterations will likely be extremely time-consuming, tedious to set up. Uh, so I want to emphasize here that the user really just set up the base run in ENSYS and then flag four design parameters and request design of experiment and, uh, and get very easily the re response server showing the effect of both engine speed as shown on this slide and thickness, out, uh, thickness at the outlet on the maximum deformation. It also immediately shows you that all samples report maximum deformation below the design constraint of 1.5 uh, millimeter. So all done without complex scripts. So here I want to thank you again for watching my particular presentation. I was happy to inform you about some of our, some of our key features and solver mm -hmm. technologies. But Neil is mentioning this 10-minute overview is, of course, rather short. And therefore, uh, yeah, I would like to encourage you to check out www.ensys.com and um, I'll contact us otherwise. So thank you. Thank you, Wim. Um, very interesting presentation. Our second presentation is given by Derek Cooper, who is a product manager at Autodesk. However, as you probably know, Autodesk recently acquired Blue Ridge Numerics, where Derek was the Vice President of Product Management, and he was responsible for directing overall product strategy. Derek began his career at Blue Ridge in 2005 and has held various senior positions in pre- and post-sales support and marketing. Previously, he held positions in pre- and post-sales support for numerous CAE products at Mallet Technology. Derek earned a master's degree and bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from T Temple University. Thank you for joining us, Derek, and you have the mic. Great, thank you. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about uh, CF Design. And one of the missions of CF Design is, is enabling engineers to get more done in 24 hours than in any other method, whether it's digital or physical. And the process that we, we, we we do this with is, is what we call upfront CFD. So I'll get into a little bit about what upfront CFD is here uh, throughout the presentation. So a little bit of a background. So it, as they said, Blue Ridge Numerics was the company that, that founded um, CF Design, founded in 1992. So CF Design is our flagship product, leaders in the upfront CFD space. So we'll talk a little bit about what upfront CFD is and what the enabling technologies are. So let, let's start off with, uh, with our MCAD connections. So one of the challenges tr in traditional simulation is, is dealing with the geometry in, in, from the design environment. So in this case, I have a valve example. And that little orange part in the middle is something that, that I might want to vary to optimize the pressure drop within an assembly. 
So CF Design has direct CAD connections from all the major CAD systems. And I'm able to leverage uh, things like configurations in SOLIDWORKS or I assemblies with inside of Inventor. And you're noticing on the screen as I'm changing uh, the geometry, I can change the different uh, configurations to try what-if scenarios to, to, to capture the, the optimal design. So I'm not going into a simulation environment and, and, and rebuilding it. I'm doing this right directly from the CAD environment. I'm able to change the geometry and the simulation environment is completely connected. But there's some underlying technology that's involved in these, in these CAD connections. So we have things such as rules and templates. So rules allow us to automate the process. So that's, what, that's one of the forefronts of upfront CFD is being able to automate the, the process of, of conducting simulation within product design. So we have things like templates. So templates can allow uh, engineers across the organization to share information and share the process, uh, whether it's a complex process or it's a repeatable process, but it just extends the reach of simulation across the entire uh, department or within the engineering community. Other things that we really want to leverage is associativity. So as I said, if we make changes within the CAD system, we want our simulation environment to, to update and give us quick, fast feedback uh, on, on what impact that design change had on, on the overall performance. Once inside of the environment, one of the important parts in all simulation is intelligent meshing. So CF Design employs intelligent automatic meshing. So we take the geometry once it's into the, in, the, in the simulation environment, and we do a pretty unique uh, algorithm which goes through and, and it, it uh, surveys the model, it looks for proximity, it looks for small gaps, it looks for small features, and in a click of a button it automatically detects what the optimal mesh size should be. So it looks at the curvature, it looks at the proximity, it looks at the boundary conditions, and it automatically determines what the optimal mesh is. So a click, in one click of a button, you get an automatic preview of what the mesh should look like. And then once you go through the meshing, you get a preview of what the mesh should look like here on the screen here in a second. But the click button mesh, meshing is not enough for, for, for many engineers out in the world. So th there are a, a numerous advanced tools within CF Design, such as extruded meshing, uh, geometry repair tools, geometry diagnostic tools to go through and, and give you the power of, of being able to get that optimal mesh, whether it's a click of a button or, or using some of the, the advanced techniques such as mesh refinement, automatic gap, gap refinement, to get that optimal mesh the first time. So let's talk a little bit about the solver. So once the model's meshed, we obviously need fast and accurate results. So CF Design, of course, is the Acceler and Finite Element Solver. So we chose the Finite Element method early on because of its speed and its robustness. So we continually tweak the, the algorithms behind the scenes or under the hood, as we say, to get really, really fast, accurate results. So the latest release of CF Design, uh, which is CF Design 2011, we saw a 2x performance speed up from previous releases of CF Design by continuing to, to through our research and development, to go through and, and fine tune and refine the, uh, the solver technology. We employ high performance computing on single machine as well as distributed machines. So there's a lot of intelligence, a lot of, of technology that's going on throughout the solver uh, portion of the analysis to give you accurate and fast solutions. So what kind of wraps, what, what ties it all together is our unified design study environment. So this is the CF design interface. So it allows us to do multiple what-if scenarios. It allows us to, to launch different configurations from CAD, as I said earlier. It allows us to run multiple different flow rates, different heat loads, different materials, different meshes. So it allows us to do a sensitivity study over a wide variety of parameters to get that optimal design. But setting, a, setting up models in a design study is not enough. So we've automated that process, but, but doing side-by-side -side comparison is really what engineers are really trying to get to in the, in the end. Right? So setting it up is just one piece of the puzzle that's just it's a necessary uh, part of the process. But doing the side-by-side -side comparison, and you're looking at this valve assembly up on the screen, where I'm able to drag and drop three-dimensional images, three-dimensional dynamic images, so I can go in and peel apart models across the entire design study to, to find out what that optimal design should be. So there's a ton of technology and automation built inside the interface for these what-if scenarios. So we have things such as cloning and uh, critical values. So critical values allow me to extract that, that critical value that I care about, such as pressure drop or maximum temperature or minimum temperature throughout the entire design study very quickly to get a, a snapshot of what the, what the performance is. So the ultimate goal is what we, what, what we want is to understand whether something passed or failed. And we want to do that as fast as possible. 
So let's look at a quick case study. So here's a, a, one of our, our, our customers is a, a leading lighting manufacturer. And, and like many of the lighting uh, folks out there in the industry, they're moving towards LEDs. So LEDs have a much longer lifespan than, than traditional lights. But some of the challenges that they have are, are temperatures. The temperatures must remain lower than traditional lighting, considerably lower. So the cooler it is, the longer it lasts. That's kind of the rule of thumb. But historically, uh, lighting engineers would, would build these heat sinks like you see on the screen, but, and they would try to maximize the surface area. Well, that, that's, that's all well and good, except for the surface area is not enough. It, it's really a combination of the surface area and the airflow, the natural air, what we call natural uh, convection going on within the, uh, within the lighting assembly in these housings. So these lights are, are, are stuck in these small little um, enclosures, and they tend to be up in ceilings in the vertical position. So there were some challenges with, with the traditional housing. So again, they're retrofitting old lights with new lights. So they wanted to try different things. So they, they, they looked at doing external flow or external fin. So as, as these housings are, 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 are mounted in the ceiling, the air is heating up and it's, it's flowing upward over the outside of the, uh, of the lighting device. So it, it allows them to, to maximize the surface area, maintain uh, optimal flow paths of the natural air flowing around it to, to extract the maximum amount of heat. So again, the cooler these lights stay, the longer they last. So we did a design study over a wide variety of different uh, scenarios. So we tried different fins, different materials, different orientations, different uh, numbers of fins. And what you're looking at here is, a, is the junction temperature, is the temperature on that LED. With a, a gray line going across is that, that failure, that critical temperature that they care about. So we wanted to just go through and we wanted to try a bunch of different runs overnight. So we ran five different models overnight to get that optimal design. So if we look at what the traditional light looks like, the traditional housing, I should say, here's a snapshot of what the airflow looks like. So if you look in the center where all the pins are, there's very hot locations. So there's not enough air getting within that, that housing. So this is the, the airflow over, over the, uh, the, the LED lighting assembly itself. Then you'll see what happens when, when you put the fins on the outside. So you notice with the fins on the outside, you get a nice even distribution of airflow over the, over the fins, and the temperatures drop significantly. So they stay within that range, and again, keep them within that range, let, let, lead the life of the, of the light um, to its maximum uh, capacity. So again, I just want to wrap up with, with four key elements to, to upfront CFD. One is the CAD connections. The other one is, is intelligent automatic meshing. The last is accelerant finite element solver all tied together with their unified design study environment. That's what makes upfront CFD quite different than, than traditional CFD out there in the marketplace. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Very nice presentation. Our next speaker is Dr. David Kahn, who is the Vice President of Sales for Comsol. Uh, David Kahn received a PhD in Applied Mathematics from UCLA in 1999. In 2001, he set up the Los Angeles branch office of Comsol, where he is currently the Vice President of Sales for the Southwest USA. Welcome, David. Thanks a lot, Laura, and I really appreciate uh, Design World for uh, offering us this opportunity to talk about our software and our CFD capabilities. Um, really, the story of Comsol begins uh, in, uh, in graduate school uh, with some students taking uh, numerical analysis classes and uh, engineering physics classes and realizing, you know, there's some lot of good technology out there to do simulation that would make engineers' jobs a lot easier. But there's a certain disconnect because those uh, algorithms aren't really in a package that people can use. So the principle of Comsol, and, and of course, and by extension, the principle of CFD and Comsol really comes down to getting the software technology into the hands of 
day-to-day -day, day -day engineers. And so uh, when it comes to ComSol's principles that we stand with, including in CFD, the number one thing is ease of use. In other words, we want people to be able to use the software. And so uh, that's a kind of tailored functionality, these interfaces that we make, uh, and the robustness that is, uh, is built into the ComSol comes from that kind of desire to really get the best technology into the hands of, of users out there. Of course, uh, we all, always, in numerical analysis and computational uh, science, we're always a, a very um, cognizant of efficiency and of, of accuracy. We want those things, for sure. Uh, and that's kind of a, a, a basic uh, element uh, to what we do as well. So having the best solvers is also built in. And of course, ComSol, we're, we're very well known for being uh, the leader in multi-physics in uh, certain aspects. So uh, we uh, always want to have multi-physics built in. So including when we do CFD, we want to be those that are uh, keeping in mind not only the fluid flow, but also its connection with any other kind of, kind of physics. And so um, maybe to uh, make up for my title as being a VP of sales, I may be overcompensating here, but I like to put it in equation so everybody can see the equation there. Um, this is actually uh, showing you a, the force that's distributed on this solar panel by, this, uh, by, the, by the wind that's going across it. Um, this is actually very crucial, uh, even though it's a, a kind of a, simple, a short equation. It's very crucial because this is, uh, shows the, um, uh, the structural, the fluid structure interaction, the FSI, uh, that occurs on this wind panel. In particular, it includes both the uh, inertial term as well as the pressure term. So that's an important little aspect. Um, kind of also to uh, bring out the fact that COMSOL, we always uh, allow you to look down deep into the, uh, into the simulation if that's indeed what you're, what you're after. Um, the, com the CFD uh, capabilities in COMSOL have certain underlying technology. Um, we've heard a, a few of these uh, uh, talked about already. The finite element method, I think, is a, uh, a well-accepted method to do CFD, uh, both in terms of accuracy and efficiency. Um, it's a uh, higher order method. It allows for uh, flexibility in terms of uh, being able to link with a lot of different other kinds of, of physics. Um, let's see, also there's this matter of stability. Um, one of the hard things that uh, any simulation engineer realizes is, is that when you're doing a simulation, sometimes your solution doesn't converge. And one reason, especially in CFD, that this happens is all the nonlinearities cause there to be instabilities, and so you don't get to where you're, after, where you're going after. And so uh, this kind of thing is uh, built into uh, uh, COMSOL. Um, uh, in a very uh, kind of detailed way, and we, and, and we allow the, the users to kind of see kind of what's going on as far as the stabilization goes. Uh, meshing uh, is also a critical feature. Uh, automatic meshing is something that everybody's after. It's kind of a holy grail to be able to just bring in a geometry from a CAD tool and uh, let the mesh kind of pop out automatically. Um, of course, that's something that we, that we work on and that we, uh, that we um, uh, allow. And so in the newest version of console, we have this automatic meshing. If you take a look at this uh, screenshot here, you can see the boundary layer that's been automatically inserted uh, around a solid region uh, and connecting to a, a flow region. And then you have the different colors showing you either pyramid elements or prism elements that kind of transition from the, uh, from the boundary layer to the, uh, to the bulk uh, volume. So it, meshing is, is very critical as well. And I have a list, uh, in, in the list here I have a name, compatibility. And really what this means is that uh, in COMSOL we want our CFD capabilities to be connected to anything else that we do. So that includes other types of physics, be it structural analysis, electromagnetics, heat transfer, of course, is a big one, even acoustics. Uh, people like to do fluid acoustic interaction. Uh, but in addition to that, we also uh, feel it's important to have compatibility with our uh, MCAD tools that are that, with the MCAD tools that are out there. So we have a, a product family called the Live Links, and these link to all the all the major CAD vendors um, uh, for both mechanical CAD and for eCAD as well. So we can connect uh, Comsol in in a very uh, seamless way. So compatibility is another big issue for us. In addition to the technology, uh, we have a broad and rich family of applications out there for COMSOL. And I've just uh, shown just three of them. 
Um, uh, up in the upper left, you see a reactor with three and porous uh, flow regions. This is actually very important uh, for several classes of engineers, um, different types of, uh, for instance, in oil and gas, this is a very important aspect to have free flow together with porous media flow. And so COMSOL handles that uh, in a nice way. Um, kind of microfluidics like this inkjet model, that's uh, another important aspect. And then another thing where we're uh, fairly uh, uh, well uh, versed that is the uh, tribology or, or the uh, lubrication type modeling. So you have a journal bearing here. You can actually model the fluid flow just on that very thin region in a, in a quick way. Of course, that doesn't uh, end the applications of COMSOL CFD capabilities. Uh, we have a full list here. You can kind of see uh, several different ones. Um, you can even uh, expand this more. We have several different options in terms of doing uh, fluid flow. And one neat thing about COMSOL is that you can always add physics. You can always add, augment whatever model you're dealing with. So say you start off with a heat transfer model. You want to add some fluid flow to see what would happen if you if you blew air past it. Uh, COMSOL allows for this kind of uh, kind of uh, very uh, seamless and I would say um, uh, intuitional way of adding different types of analysis on the fly. So um, you know all that is well and good, but really what we're after uh, and what uh, most engineers are after is a result. You want to have con you want to be confident in getting results, and you want to see a proven track record of uh, track record of results. And so here we have one of our users in uh, Italy. This is Gianluca Argentini of Riello Burners. And um, he, his design was to come up with these, uh, these, uh, these burners both for, for domestic and industrial use. Uh, they're kind of like turbines with these blades coming out. Uh, and so he was able to use COMSOL uh, in this graphical user interface that you see here. Uh, he was able to use COMSOL to get some good results, actually uh, improved uh, both the efficiency of the uh, actual operation of these burners by 20%. So that was a, a, a big uh, increase. And then he also was able to uh, reduce the materials that he, was, uh, that he needed to actually build one of these um, by, uh, by, uh, by one euro per unit. So he's actually able to make a big uh, impact on the bottom line as well. So uh, the results that COMSOL brings to our users is uh, something I think, uh, again, uh, shows uh, the, the benefit of, of, of using CFD in COMSOL and especially in a, in a multi-physics um, application like, like these burners. All right, so I'll pass it back over to Laura. Thank you. Nice job. Our last presenter is Dr. Evo Weinhold, who is the product manager at Mentor Graphics. And Evo is a uh, product marketing manager for the mechanical analysis division. In this role, he is responsible for developing industry-focused marketing activities for Mentor Graphics mechanical analysis product lines. Prior to Mentor Graphics, Evo worked for NIKA, Fluent, and Fluid Dynamics International. Starting his career in the CFD industry in 1993, his engineering, sales, and management roles through the years have included technical support, sales, and marketing of electronics cooling CFD software. In over 10 years, product management for the Flow EFD line of CFD products at NIKA, Flomerix, and Mentor Graphics. He received his master's degree in mechanical engineering from the Dresden University of Technology in Germany and his PhD from the University of Greifswald, I hope I pronounced that right, and that is located in Germany as well. So Evo, thank you for your bio and you have the mic, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, welcome to my presentation about the Flow EFD for concurrent CFD embedded in the design process. Uh, <clears throat> first, I will uh, introduce to you two advanced uh, physical modeling capabilities. One is advanced radiation and the other is advanced uh, cavitation. These are just two examples of what's possible to do with Flow EFD. Of course, besides the regular function functionality of a, a state-of-the-art uh, CFD code today. A second, I uh, will give an overview over the underlying solver technologies employed by Flow EFD, as well as a brief summary 
of our unique uh, automatic meshing technology. And I will conclude my presentation with a successful application of Flow EFD for power tools by a customer uh, based here in, in Germany. Well, Flow EFD is an advanced CFD software package specifically designed for engineers working in product development. Its unique CFD technology allows performing CFD simulations projects involving complex cut geometry very efficiently. And I think um, efficiency is the key prerequisite for successful CFD simulations within the product development process. Because I think uh, CFD projects uh, always must keep pace with the uh, ever accelerating design uh, cycles. As very well known, thermal radiation is one of the three fundamental methods of heat transfer. It's a quite a complex physical phenomenon and a suitable radiation model should consider most of this complexity in order to deliver high quality results. The correct simulation of radiative heat transfer is very important for a correct prediction of the temperature distribution for many tasks. Those tasks include, for instance, automotive lighting design, um, electronic cooling, comfort level simulations of buildings, and many more. The radiation simulation model of flow EFD considers all major physical effects in order to uh, successfully address a wide range of engineering tasks involving radiation. For instance, um, radiation absorption in solids is considered, also known as semi-transparent materials, such as glass or plexiglass. The dependency of radiation energy from the wavelength is taken into account, along with the possibility to define spectral properties. And uh, the specularity of surfaces, uh, for instance, is taken into account as well as the refractive index of transparent and semi-transparent parts for consideration for of optical effects. This advanced radiation model was implemented to accommodate the needs of engineers um, responsible for thermal design of automotive headlamps, rear lights, and similar applications. It is designed for ease of use, only requiring minimum input data for materials. The model is then used automatically for a fully coupled fluid flow and heat transfer simulation. Another example for a sophisticated physical model addressing a very important engineering issue is the cavitation model. Cavitation is a very dangerous effect which can occur in valves, pumps, uh, impellers, propellers, etc. Due to local pressure decrease below the vapor pressure level of a liquid, a gas bubble formation and uh, subsequent implosion can take place, leading to significant damage of parts. Engineers usually need to avoid any form of cavitation, and therefore a reliable answer to the question, will a cavitation occur, and if yes, where it is located in the design, is an important objective of CFD studies. So EFD offers two modeling approaches, an engineering cavitation model and an isothermal cavitation model. The uh, appropriate model is um, applied automatically, depending on the section of the working fluid. And both models are a full liquid gas two-phase flow implementation and capable of predicting the position and size of cavitation areas. And then uh, and allowing engineers to optimize their designs to eliminate the negative impact of cavitation using flow EFD simulations. Well, um, at this point, I'd like to give a brief overview over the numerical schemes employed uh, by Flow EFD. Uh, Flow EFD bases on the self-centered uh, finite volume method using an immersed uh, boundary uh, mesh approach. And implicit methods are applied for both incompressible and compressible fluid flow and also slightly compressible gas flow. And an explicit method is used for high Mach number flows. And as I already mentioned before, 
a fully coupled multi-physics formulation is used for fluid flow heat transfer and electrical simulations. And uh, flow EFD always uses a uh, second order approximation for the conservation laws in the fluid and in the solid. And the linear algebra solver basis on the multi grid method, which makes the computational effort per cell and iteration independent from the total cell count. I believe flow EFD is fully automatic mesh generation technology is a key for successful CFD projects embedded in the design process. And uh, to date, um, the meshing time for complex and real world geometry is often the limiting factor of such projects. In flow EFD's automatic mesh generator uses the principles of an immersed boundary Cartesian mesh allowing fully automatic meshing of very complex 3D cut geometry while preserving all advantages of a Cartesian mesh. This technology includes a special treatment for very thin solid geometry and narrow channels, as well as a, uh, a unique physical model covering the complex physics uh, near the wall. The combination of these technologies allowed to address the demanding uh, engineering simulation tasks with extremely complex cut geometry and ensures the high quality of simulation results. Well, finally, I would like to introduce an example of a successful application of flow AFD in industry. An AEG electric tools based in southern Germany develops and um, manufactures electric tools for the brands AEG power tools and Milwaukee electric tools. And AG Electric Tools um, was recognized as a member of Germany's top 100 most innovative companies. Their product portfolio includes more than 100 different tool types for diverse applications in wood and metal, including hammers, percussion and diamond drills, angle and straight grinders, and chick and circular saws. So AHG power tools use flow EFD embedded in uh, Pro Engineer Wildfire, allowing them to directly use their cut models inside Pro Engineer without any data transfer or conversion. The design challenge for this application was the optimization of size and position of housing openings for a new angle grinder design. Design engineers wanted to balance out the cooling performance requirements with the dust protection and safety requirements. And with the help of Flow EFD for Pro Engineer Wildfire, they could find an optimized housing design with significantly better cooling effect uh, while uh, protecting the sensitive areas such as the motor and the electronics from the uh, abrasive grinder dust. As a result, the expected lifetime of this new machine could be extended up to a factor of 10. And I should also mention that the CUT model was directly used in its full complexity for the CFD simulations and uh, therefore greatly benefiting from Flow EFD's unique mesh generation and physical modeling capabilities. Well, I hope I could give you an impression of the uh, powerful capabilities of Flow EFD. And for more information about Flow EFD's technology, um, more customer case studies, and a choice of free trial versions, uh, please visit our website www.mentor.com slash mechanical. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evo. We appreciate your presentation very much. Now we come to the end of uh, the program. We're winding down, and we have a couple of questions that popped up, and they're kind of general, so maybe all four of you might want to um, comment. The first one is, management at my company wants designers to start using analysis earlier in the product development process. What CFB product is easiest to implement and is extensive training necessary? I'll open that up to anyone who'd like to answer that. Well, 
I'll chime in. This is David with Comsol. Uh, of course, you know, I think <laughs> all of us will say our product is the best <laughs> for you to use. So, um, you know, which product is best is kind of, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's a tough one to answer. But I would say this, you know, regarding training, um, you know, simulation is something that comes down to the user. So, um, of course, uh, we, kind of depending on where the user starts, that's how much training he, he or she will need to to get going. Um, I would say most engineers with some design experience can become proficient at um, uh, at CFD, you know, with a, with a couple days or a week long of, of use of training. It kind of depends on how detailed they want to get and then how much they want to get out of it. Of course, to become an expert takes time, and that's just how it is. So um, I don't know if anybody, if the other guys want to chime in that. Yes, this is a school of mentor graphics. Um, you know, we at Mentor Graphics, we have a um, we have a strict philosophy of embedding uh, simulation technology like CFD uh, within the CAD system, and therefore also within a PLM environment, and uh, therefore provide a good tool um, for um, easy and uh, easy to learn uh, simulation. Uh, within the CAD environment, um, because this we think uh, that is one of the key elements of uh, to provide the necessary efficiency uh, for those simulations. Um, I think um, in order to make CFD simulations beneficial uh, within the design cycle, uh, they must be done uh, fast enough to have high quality results ready right at the time uh, the next uh, design decisions uh, are made. And um, here I think uh, to work within the uh, uh, well-known and familiar um, PLM and uh, CAT environment uh, would provide the, the most efficient way to do this. Um, there's another question here. Um, are there trends in the CFD software development uh, marketplace? Yeah, this is Derek at Autodesk. So I, I'm just take a crack at it. So the trends that we're seeing, is, and I think a lot of people mention, is, is leveraging CFD as part of a part of the product development process or the, the design process. So and that's it's a wide range from from designers to analysts, but leveraging CFD to help drive design decisions. Uh, is a trend that we've been seeing for a long time. So that's you know leveraging the CAD, as, as many of us have talked about today, automating the process as much as possible, and getting fast, accurate results. I think they, they tend to fall in the, the three trends that I would see. Yep, that's Ego from Mentor Graphics again. Um, I, I absolutely agree with Derek. Um, we also see that trend. And um, I think here the, the the main point is, um, and I believe that was virtually mentioned by all the uh, presenters today, is um, the reliability and the robustness and the quality of the results. And I think uh, it's necessary to underline that once again, um, even if the code looks like easy to use or you know, provides simulation results very, very uh, fast and, and efficiently, uh, of course, there must not be any compromise um, in result quality and, and uh, solution accuracy. And um, I think the, uh, the trend is uh, to uh, provide exactly that um, high quality and solution accuracy uh, of results uh, in a very efficient way uh, using uh, all uh, no, all the PLM given environments um, like CAD system, you know, like uh, visualization systems, etc., uh, in order to achieve that. Anyone else? Yeah, this is David with Comsol. Can you hear okay. me? Oh, yeah. Um, 
Let's see. I would just, uh, yeah, agree. You know, the the you know, to be able to in to uh, uh, use simulation within the design cycle, kind of in a seamless way, is is, is probably the biggest trend. I, I, we've all talked about linking the, the the geometry side, the meshing side, and then also, you know, I think the the the, the backside, you know, the parametric solvers, the optimization, that that backside of how to really. Um, use the, the design not just to do one simulation but to do a whole family of simulations to actually get you at a final solution that's really I think what um, what we're after so I mean I, I agree I think that the, the, the linking the simulation with design is really the, the key okay thank you yeah. we, we another uh, one. It enters. Oh, I, I see it enters if I may uh, add another point I fully agree with all previous speakers for sure uh, but we see another trend in indeed also that optimi optimizing performance through robust design is getting more and more important. Uh, while they started off all in the mechanical arena, yeah, looking at robust design uh, and looking at what uh, sensitivity certain parameters had, this is now also getting more and more of an attention in the CFD uh, in the CFD area. So that's uh, apart from multiple uh, automated parametric design variations. Uh, people are looking more in DOE uh, as well as um, as well as six sigma analysis for using CFD. Okay, thank you, Wim. Here's one that, that says, "Can I write to David concerning some technical issues about Comsol uh, in parentheses fluid flow, heat transfer, uh, etc." So we have your um, your contact information there, David, and I'm sure this person would like to chat with you or send you an email. Okay. <laughs> I will say no. Also, uh, David, another one directed to you. It says, is it possible to arrange some COMSOL workshops that are conducted in English but in Germany? Who would that person need to get in contact with? Yeah, start with me. I'll, I'll see what we can do. We have an office in Göttingen that we could uh, probably link you up with. Okay, great. Uh, another one here says, my research group is looking for software for making simulations of microfluidic devices, but we are looking for the adequate CFD software that could handle lots of multi-physics phenomena and also simulate particle tracing in fluids with ease. Anyone want to tackle that one? Or would you like me to read it again? Yeah, maybe read it one more time. OK. My research group is looking for software for making simulations of microfluidic devices. But we are looking for the adequate CFD software that could handle lots of multi-physics phenomena and also simulate particle tracing in fluids. Yeah, yeah. I, I can add something there. Uh, I'm uh, Wim Slachter from ANSYS. Uh, I know that we, and I'm uh, clearly not the expert in microfluids, but I'm, I'm aware that we have customers using, uh, in this case, an ANSYS uh, fluid for simulation of electrokinetic effect in fluid flows mm -hmm. under the influence of electric fields. So typical applications in that area are in the fields of microfluids and, uh, for example, also analysis of biological fluids. And we have uh, uh, yeah, specific capabilities, a specific module for that, EAT, uh, uh, for that matter. Yeah, but again, I'm not the expert, but I'm happy to, uh, to follow up on this particular inquiry uh, with the okay. appropriate person. And at Comsol, uh, we actually um, are coming out with a microfluidics product too. So, uh, you know, I, I think you know, I, just to be fair to everybody, you know, I, it's it's good to do your due diligence and check out all the major vendors and see what works best for you. Oh, okay. Anybody else want to tackle that one? And we have one last question here, and this is a question I have heard for many many years. How do you verify the results of CFD and make sure that the results are valid? And I'm sure you've had to answer that one many times to all of you. So if any of you want to take a stab at it, just go right ahead.
Yeah, this okay. This is David with Comstock. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, like you like you said, Laura. Everybody's had to <clears throat> deal with this, and how do I know my results are right? And so, yeah. um, you, you have to check them. I think that's that's what it comes down to. There's no mm -hmm. uh, magic bullet. Um, you mm -hmm. know, there is you know, there's computer simulations, and then there's the real world. And of course, you know, we're doing our best to get solutions that are real world applicable directly on a computer. But you know, you mm -hmm. ha you have to you have to check it. You have to check it against the data that you have. Um, of course, you want to, you know, be able to manage your data in, in the best way, too. So, uh, you know, I, it's, uh, it's, um, there's no magic bullet, at least not yet at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that was a good answer. Thank you. Anyone else? Brad, I think it's Ivo from Mentor Graphics again. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we uh, typically distinct between verification and validation. You know, ver verification is usually uh, at the site at the software vendors and to make sure that the implemented physical models uh, are you know, correctly implemented and that they are verified and usually that it's uh, you know documented uh, with a large set of uh, validation examples and uh, uh, so so it's it's very well documented and usually you know today's uh, commercial CFT codes undergo a, an extensive QA process. Uh, regression testing, you know, and things like that. So that's on the vendor side to to make sure that the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the physical models and, and the technology is implemented properly. But on the other side, we have validation, and that's uh, actually what uh, David um, mentioned uh, uh, already mentioned. That, that is to to make sure, um, you know, that first of all there are no modeling mistakes, etc. So so we need to check the results, and in here there are also uh, know common best practices in, in, in the industry and um, there are various organizations who, who uh, uh, dealt with this topic uh, so what the uh, what an engineer can do to make sure that uh, simulation results are, are good so and that ranges from the, the right use of the software up to the right understanding of the physical task of the, the modeling uh, input for, for the physical model, for the uh, simulation model, etc. And I recommend, you know, to to go uh, with that. And I think mean, it's also usually it's a part of an of a training course, for instance, you know, to teach uh, these kinds of best practices um, how to uh, generate the confidence in uh, simulation results. Okay. Thank you very much. I can add also something, uh, Laura. At the end, is we we have indeed, uh, uh, of course, like others possibly too, we are involved in many many industry uh, groups uh, throughout the world on the various industry aspects, like on combustion, like on multi-phase flow modeling. We are working together with partners uh, in in industry, but also in academia. So if that that's one aspect of it, on validation, of course. At the same time, as also mentioned, indeed we provide. Uh, courses on CFD uh, best practices, but then all relevant to a specific uh, industry segment, uh, like mm -hmm. for oil and gas or for uh, turbo machinery, we have specific uh, trainings for that matter. Uh, in addition, I can say we do also provide very comprehensive verification manuals. That is something else than, of course, validation, but we provide ver verification manuals as well as vali uh, lots of validation problems from customers. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but then, the, of course, the person should contact us. For that matter, the verification manual is part of the uh, of the license. The, the validation materials can be provided upon upon request for uh, for type for various type of problems. We also have an many many uh, because of the academia links. Uh, we we provide. Um, a, a very large suite of uh, um, technical papers uh, showing validation work against uh, experiment. And uh, even if the people will Google for it, validation and ANSYS and CFD, uh, people will find tons of papers with, with validation. So I would rather like to encourage also to check that out. All right, thank you. And I'd like to t thank everyone on the panel for your insights and your terrific presentations today. Just as a reminder, this website will be available at um, the Design World website. Um, we'll be emailing it to all the participants who joined us today. 
Uh, you can tweet about the high points or the low points, whichever you prefer, with the hash mark CFD web. And connect with uh, Design World. We'd love to have you um, check out our both our printed publication as well as our online sites. You can also discuss this webinar on the engineeringexchange.com. And uh, without further ado, uh, thank you gentlemen and hopefully we'll get together again sometime soon.